Hello everybody, welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we are continuing our course at 2021 Adventures and playing some Black Red Vile Goblins featuring the brand new Conspicuous Snoop combo. Uh, so we could just be playing typical aggro goblins like normal, but I quite like the Vile Goblins. This is that uh, goblins variant that got popularized after Force at 20 gave us Goblin Ringleader and Modern Horizons gave us Goblin Matron into Modern, making the goblins archetype a lot more resilient and grindy. Now, I will go over the Conspic Conspicuous Snoop combo for those who don't know it. So Conspicuous Snoop has all of the activated abilities of the creature of whatever is on top of your library. So we're going to play that and then we're going to play Bogart Harbinger, which has the ability when it enters to go tutor a goblin to the top of your library. So we're going to go tutor up Kiki Cheeky Mirror Breaker, which has the ability to tap and clone target non-legendary creature that copy gains haste. So Conspicuous Snoop is going to then have Kiki Cheeky's ability is going to be able to tap and clone itself because it itself is not a legendary creature. You're going to make another one that enters untapped. It's going to clone itself again. At the end of the day, you're going to end up with infinite of uh, conspicuous snoops. But you might be wondering why, because they're all going to be tapped. So on the last token that we make, the millionth copy, we're going to tap and clone the Bogart Harbinger again. And now that one is going to go and tutor out a Mog Fanatic, which has the ability to sacrifice itself to ping any target for one damage. So we're going to then sack our million copies of Conspicuous Snoop because they're going to have that ability to blast your opponent in the face and call it a day. And uh, it's a pretty sweet combo and really consistent. It's just a two card combo, Snoop and Bogart Harbinger, and you win. I was testing this deck and it seems quite broken because it's so like with the resilience that Goblin Matron and Ringleader and the card advantage that they give you, it's so easy to find it. So your opponent's really going to need to be heavily interactive or this is just a really good deck. We're going to see how it does. I, I have high hopes for this one. Let's check it out. And shout outs to our sponsor, Mana Traders. If you're wondering how I play so much MTGO for YouTube, it is through Mana Traders. They allow you to rent decks on Magic Online for an affordable monthly fee and play all the magic you want. You can sign up in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck and play along with us. If you want to pick up today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all of my patrons. Their names are scrolling down below. It is because of you guys that this channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. It's not required, but if you would like to support on Patreon as well, the link is down below. You can gain access to exclusive rewards. There's even a tier where you can get me to play your deck on the channel. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, so we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. And we're playing some conspicuous snoop combo. Yes, conspicuous. I know I said in the intro conspicuous. That's what I saw at first, um, but I forgot and I didn't know. And now I know. Um, anyways, we went over the combo in the, um, in the intro, the three card combo. It's actually a two card combo, just the snoop and the bog art. Uh, we got some supporting cards like matron, goblin matron and uh, goblin ringleader, which can go and get you more goblins. Even Bogart Harbinger itself can go get you more goblins. And Matron fetches out a goblin card. And there we got some weird ones, you know, like Tarfire, which is Tribal Incident Goblin. So that's technically a goblin card we can go and fetch out. That's why it's a singleton in the deck, just in case you need a shock. And then this deck is just full of like singleton or two of goblins that are just useful tech. Like Chain Whirler, if you need to deal one damage to your opponent's things. Sling Gang Lieutenant for some life gain and reach. Pasha League Mons for some more reach. And uh, Mog Fanatic's part of the combo. Skirk Prospector, just in case we need to sap some, stack some of the tokens we make off of something like this to be able to ramp us into something like Siege Gang Commander. Krenko's another fun singleton to fetch out if you're in a position where you can actually activate him. Goblin Crater Maker is a fun singleton to go and kill a non-land permanent that is colorless. Munitions Expert can kill a creature or deal damage to a creature equals to the number of goblins you control. So you can just like bring that in against Weenie Dex and we even got another one on the sideboard just for that same reason. Uh, Aether Vile is there because it's uh, the namesake Vile Goblins. It really helps you power out your stuff because this deck is more top end heavy. Um, we got on the sideboard Thought Seizes against Control and Combo. And we got um, Warren Weirding is one to bring in against Boggles. Um, because, um, you know, you can't kill their creatures with targeted removal and they're obviously a problem. So we want to kill it with Warren, Warren Weirding. So, Earwig Squad is there to bring it against combo because you swing in, pick up a goblin, and then you get to go Sadistic Sacrament them. 
um, Blood Moon because we're mainly red, so it really won't hurt us that much. And we can shut down non creature based decks like Tron or non, non basic decks like Tron and, and Amulet. A Goblin Trash Master is a single goblin we can fetch out with Matron that is good to bring in against artifact decks because we can start sacking Hecka Goblins to destroy Hecka artifacts. Another munitions expert, Relic of Prague for the Grave, and Damping Sphere for combo. And that is about it. And uh, I really don't. This I'm new to this kind of archetype. I really don't know how it's gonna go. I'll try to just YOLO it, but this is definitely probably a deck that requires a lot of practice because there's probably a lot of lines of play to do. So I apologize in advance if I make a lot of misplays because I am new to this. And with that, let's go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Gummy Bears, and we're gonna be on the play here with some conspicuous Snoop combo, and that looks good. Now all we need to do is vial in the snoop and play the matron, go fetching for the bogart, and we win. All right, cavern naming goblin. Vial go. This is gonna be interesting. All right, gummy bears, what you on? Shadow. Definitely looks like shadow so far. Yay, yes. Hex Drinker. Oh, it's Rock. Okay, it's Rock, but it's without Luris. It's non Luris Rock. So they probably brought back in Liliana. Maybe they're playing the new Liliana. Uh, yes, we're going to get Files Ability. So we play with the top card of our library revealed. Go get a basic mountain, play the snoop. Ooh, Siege Gang Commander on top. So I got Siege Gang Commander's ability to sack stuff and shoot stuff everywhere. So on my upkeep, I can stop and uh, kill their Hex Drinker if I want to, but I don't think I do want to. I think I just want to cast my matron to go get my Bogart Harbinger and go for the win. I haven't got the backup snoop. All right, Verdant Kitty Combs goes and fetches probably a basic forest. I would imagine they want more green for Scoos. Okay, they get a swamp. Probably for Lily. Bob is here. Not going to deal with those boys. Yeah, they're probably going to swing because they know that I'm not going to trade my Snoop off. All right. Vial's going to tick up. Ooh, Mog Fanatic. Not going to play that. Let's just go play Matron. Go and get Bogart Harbinger. Munitions expert. Can I put this from the top of my library? This is from the top of the library. All right, pass turn. So I really hope they tap out here. I really hope they do. Liliana the Veil entered. Please tap out for that. We got you here. Don't thought seize me. Don't you dare. No, are you serious? It took my Harbinger. You probably know the combo. Welp. Neil Spellbomb. All right, violin, pick you a snoop. Tab, vial's gonna tick up. Bloodstained Mire. All right, let us feel the ruin you. Get a swamp. 
There's a sling gang lieutenant on top. Let's play munitions expert. Shoot down probably Bob. Maybe not. Maybe I don't care about Bob. Uh, maybe I'm trying to just deal damage to them now. Yeah, let's kill Hexdrinker. I, I kind of want them to take self paint off Bob. They're at 11, and I can swing at them for 5 here. And then I got Sling Gang Lieutenant going also next turn. All right, I'll take that. That's fine. That was a fine turn. I am okay with that turn. They're going to draw a card. They're at eight, though, and I got the board. Even one more land is not bad, because I get uh, Siege Gang Lieutenant down, and that's probably going to end the game, since they don't have any main board sweepers, and being at that low of a life total, sling, uh, Siege Gang will definitely end it. Who's is here? Okay, so they get to eat their own graveyard. And Goyf. Oh, there's a conspicuous snoop. Alright, let's uh, kill their... Overgrown tomb. Get a swamp. Ooh, Mog Fanatic on top. Maybe we can just end the game here. No. I can't. <gasps> Kiki Jiki. Yo. Yeah, we can't end the game here. Kiki's on top. Yeah, we are we are ending the game right now. For sure. It is over. Yeah, they're scooping it up to Kiki. Because they know I have Sling Gang. I'm about to file it in and copy Sling Gang and then just sack everything. All right, that was cool. Uh, so sideboard against um, uh, Black Green Rock. Blood Moon seems decent, although not insane. I don't need Thoughtseize. If they... Okay, I really have to watch out for... Um, uh for what is that that guy you name a you name um creature type and it gives them minus one minus one plague engineer munitions expert seems pretty good they have like bob and scoos and hex drinker and like the delirium guy whatever his name is grim flare um relic of progenitus is not bad i kind of like that Let's cut Skirk Prospector. Let's cut... Um, maybe Zijin Commander, just a weird singleton. I don't know. Do I need Chain Whirler? Probably not. It is a decent blocker. But I'd rather have Relic... Blood Moon's not bad, but I think I can do without it. I have a green screen error. I see it. Okay, this looks good. Let's keep that. It looks great. I have the turn three combo. If they take our vial here, that's fine, because I still got turn three. If I draw a land, they take our vial, so they're probably going to kill our Snoop. Auntie's Hovel on Snoop. I drew a Kiki. That's why there's a backup one in the deck. Goose is here. Land? Give me a land. Ooh, that's a land. All right, name Goblin. Play Snoop. All right, opponent. Putting you to the test. You got to kill this or you are dead. And we have an Auntie's Hovel on top. 
but they're just gonna play lily make me sack it and then we're dead although if i were them i would cut lilies because they're really not good here match but it's definitely good right now because that's killing me Okay, I guess we just go with um, Munitions Expert, right? And kill Lily. Alright, let's get a Blood Crypt tapped. Go. They can grow their Snoop. Boyf is here, and he's a 5-6 already? It's turn four. <laughs> uh, let's just take it, because I'd rather chump the Goyf. Auntie's Hovel on... Let's just go Sling Gang Lieutenant, because he holds down the fort better. He or she. What is that? That looks like a he. Throwing in the way the little goblins, grabbing them by the booties. If I can keep the sling gang alive, that'd be great because then I can, uh, because then I can copy it with Kiki. If I hit my fifth land, that would be good. All right, declare chumps, declare chumps. Throw them at ya. Land? That's a land. Although I think I wanna go for combo here. So let's just fetch for a basic mountain and let's go for, um, Matron and grab a Snoop, and then try to go for game. Grab the Snoop, play the Snoop. Next turn's game. There's a Relic on top. Alright, I'm giving the opponent a chance to kill it. Gotta kill it now. There's another Goyf. Alright, sure. Bobble. Show me the push, dude. Show me the push or the dismember or abrupt decay or assassin's trophy. Nothing yet. Yo, nothing yet. Let's just block with Matron here. Back it, blow it, throw it out their face. Come on, pass it on over. Yee. Matron on top. All right, Bogart, here we go. Here we go. Opponent, you got an answer? No! All right, well, grab a swamp, blog art. Okay, what do we want? Probably another snoop, right? Grab another snoop, play a relic. I think I crack relic now so they can't go eating with scoos. Because they have two things to eat. So yeah, let's just crack relic now. Kalidus is here. That's fine. Um. All right. We will take it.
Goblin Crater Maker. All right, I think I go Kiki and I clone. Uh, I can go Kiki, clone Munitions Expert, and kill Scoos. Or I can go Kiki, clone Slinking Lieutenant on their upkeep. Or I can go Snoop plus Crater Maker and just live another turn and try to go for it next turn. Oh, I don't know. I think I'll go Kiki here. It makes the most sense in terms of, like, staying alive. So stopping their upkeep here. Very greedy stopping on their upkeep, but I'm going to do it anyways. I gotta get out this Snoop, and then I can go uh, copy the bo the Bogard Harbinger. Chum chum chum, sack sack sack. Yeah, we're just being annoying right now. That's what this deck does. stays alive okay they're ending that's good let's go snoop what's on top <laughs> we can even fix the top hey 12 Matrons on top. All right, matrons on top. Hugs. Um, okay, with that, we're going to go and get... Oh, do we have enough for Krenko? We don't have enough for Krenko, but Krenko would be cool. I think let's go and get... Um, munitions expert and just play it and kill something. All right, let's play it and kill Kalidus. And let's pass a turn and just stay alive because Next turn, we win with the Snoop. Oh, wait a second. I think that, that conspicuous, conspicuous Snoop would also gain haste, right? All right, let's uh, copy Munitions Expert. And kill Bob. Untap. Copy Bargard Harbinger. And now we go for it. Say yes. Go and grab Kiki to the top. Copy himself, and now we just do this forever. Yeah, they scoop it up. They see that we're going infinite now. Wow. We ground out really good there. That was super impressive as, uh, uh, like, we bounced back from being so far behind just because our dudes are so good at chump blocking, throwing themselves at the opponent to gain life. I don't see the purpose for Skirt, uh, skirt Prospector in here. It could have been Clutch Ramp. I, I see. But yeah, the deck did fine without it. I guess it was just this, the fact that the Relic of Progenitus is shut down those goits. Just hardcore. Super good sideboard. Got a game here against El Rodeo Dos, who we played against before. Um, and this looks pretty good. We're going to be on the draw. I like this. 
Like, we got the Harbinger to go and find the Snoop. Eating goips also feels great. You're in bed watching my bestie give the beat down to some nerds. Yeah, wreck nerd. Feels good. I, I forget what L ro is it ro rodeo or rodeo? Because isn't there like something called Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills? Something like that. So maybe it could rodeo. Ooh, I'm always scared when somebody plays an untapped black source. Well, I'm tar. I'm gonna tar fire that immediately. I mean, not immediately, cause I do want to. Um, I do want to get out vile. Not gonna reveal hovel yet. I want to make them think we're on something weird, like red white taxes. All right, I've been getting in there. And white more commander. Those are the number of knights you control. Okay, but I'd much rather kill um, that guy over there. What's his name? This dude. This boy. The knight of the Ebon Legion. He just gets bigger. Let's kill that guy. Knight of the Ebon Legion is two nuts. Oh, wait. Hold on, we can deal with that. Does that kill it? Nice. Sweet. That was amazing. And we win in two turns. Because now we just play Matron, go search a Snoop, file in the Snoop, untap, Bogart, Harbinger, win. So, yeah, this is good. And I assume they're a not very heavily interactive deck. Even though they left up three mana and passed. Maybe they have Kaya's Guile up, I don't know. Auntie's Hubble on Matron, play Matron. Say yes. Go and fetch out the Snoop. Conspicuous Snoop. And we win next turn. Yeah, Ebon Legion is super, super strong. This is an insane one drop. Like, I've grown to hate this thing so much. Look at that smug face. He's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna beat you. What is this? Black Lace Paragon? Target Night King's Death Touch and Lifelink until end of turn. All right. I see you. Nice two minute three one. I wonder why they are playing this in modern and not pioneer. That is something I'm wondering. Maybe it's because they want uh, Night Exemplar. But I'm guessing. No reason to rush. I don't even care. I don't want to die to some random Chainer's Edict. Like, we got this here. I don't have to worry. Unless they got Path or Push. In which case, I'll regret. Path or Push? Yeah, they got the Path. Dang it. All right. Goblin ringleader. All right, let's go um, fetch out a basic mountain, play goblin ringleader. We're looking at the top four. I grab a siege gang commander, put the rest in the bottom in any order. 
and let's just pass and leave up blocks. No reason to get all hasty. So I can flash in Bargard Harbinger, go get another Snoop. Or you know what? With Bargard Harbinger, I think I want to go get Kiki and then Kiki to cop ri copy Ringleader or Matron or whatever and just start getting all the Kiki value. I think that could be pretty good. And then I can, like, the next turn after Kiki comes down, I can play Siege Gang and start copying Siege Gang while I violin Pasha Leekmons. It's going to be so good. Night of the Holy Nimbus is fine. I can chump that for days. All right, Vile. And we are going to turn off all auto yields. Put a stop on our upkeep. Throw in the Harbinger. We're going to go fetch out Kiki. Untap. Hold control. Put this on the stack. Activate. Put in Pashalik Mons and tick it up. Draw Kiki and play Kiki. Um... Whenever a creature without flanking blocks this creature, the blocking creature gets minus two. Okay, that's fine. Let's copy Matron. Let's go and get another Snoop. Let's attack. All right, they're going to block. Now that they block, Pasha Leak Mons will trigger. Now I'll be able to deal one damage to it and kill it. Oh, it just taps it. That's right. I should have killed their Black Lace Paragon, but it's okay. I got plenty of blockers. The value. Night is here. Next turn is going to be nuts when I go sling gang and copy it with Kiki Jiki. Oh no, what a party pooper. They keep pathing our guys. Let's take up the vial to five. And let's play Goblin. Or maybe let's play Snoop first. Let's play Snoop first. Play Snoop. All right. Let's play Goblin Matron. And we're going to go get another Bogart Harbinger that we can try to go for the combo again. Goblin Ringleader. All right. Well, let's just pass. All right, Pony, you're going to have to have path number three or push number one. They're not hitting their land drop, so I assume they do have a bunch of interaction. Okay, one card left, and it is a Knight Exemplar, so we win. Nice. All right, Violin, Siege Gang, Commander. Untap. Keep the Vial where it's at. Play Bogart Harbinger. 
And that'll do it. Get another Kiki to the top. Noob's gonna copy himself. Noob's gonna copy himself. We keep doing this until we have 18 Snoops. Or a Slinking Lieutenant would do it too, but this will do it. Wait a minute, why do I have... I just now realized, why the heck do I have Mog Fanatic in this deck when Sling Gang Lieutenant does the job? I'm actually kind of dumb for, for, for doing that. Yeah, that's... I completely forgot. But now I can go get Sling Gang Lieutenant. And now all our dudes can sack themselves. Yep. Same targets every time. The opponent sees what's going on here. Yep, and they scoop it up. Sweet. Uh, I actually just now noticed that deck building error. That we don't actually need Mog Fanatics because Sling Gang Lieutenant does it. All right, I'll make that change. I'll definitely have to make that change in between rounds, for sure. All right, so what do we want against knights? Definitely another munitions expert, and that's probably it. So bring a munitions expert and cut, I guess, one mog fanatic since we realize we don't need it. But it does have, they do have X1s we can kill. You know what, it's fine. I love how this deck is just non-stop value. That's what I really love about it. It's just like I constantly have things to do because with Matron, Harbinger, Ringleader, and just all these guys, it's just you always have something to do. It just feels good. And Vial helps so much. What you up to, 12? Any plans? Yeah. Err. Err. Hey, 12, you ever think about getting a green screen? You should get a green screen. It would really look cool with the Ocarina of Time rando. Hey, Kitsune. What is that fourth matron? I don't know. It's what it's what mana traders gave me. It's like a, a baby goblin whose diaper is being changed by a goblin mama. Baby goblin and old goblin look exactly the same. You're sleeping soon, so getting comfy with you. E cuddles. It is like super warm though. Super hot. I hope it's cooled down where you are. It is still hot here. All right, that's turn three combo right there. I'll take turn three combo for sure. You know, Sling Gang Lieutenant has felt so powerful that I'd honestly consider going up to a set of them. Today was okay, still quite a hot day though. Yeah, I feel ya, definitely. Come on, Rodeo. I got the tire fire in the opener again, which is good. Very welcome. Uh, all right, let's see if the opponent's AFK for... If they're AFK for like another minute, I'll have to stop the recording and start a new one. All right, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's acceptable for the video. I'm not sure.
All right, they got an Aether Vial of their own. I see you. I should have expected that. Take off the stop of my upkeep. Let's go Bloodstain. Go leave up Tarfire. I'm expecting them to have Giver Runes because it is an aggro deck of sorts. They only have four cards left. One of them better be a Path or Push. All right, Blood Crypt tapped. Untap. Cavern. Boglin. Snoop. Go. All right, opponent. Next turn's the turn. I have another Snoop on top. Nice. And they did have it. Files in Eben. Okay, I'm definitely gonna tar fire that. So I'll just go tar fire plus matron, get another snoop. All right, matron. I need red, give me red. Give me that Snoop. Here we go. Going to be rearranging your room soon so you could get a green screen at some point. Uh you don't need a you don't need a green screen. All you need is a green cloth, just a green curtain. I, I literally use a green piece of fabric just hanging from a, a curtain hanger behind me. Uh, it doesn't have to be an actual green screen. All it needs to be is something that is green. That's it. So, yeah, you good. Play Snoop. Hey, Adam, how's it going? I mean, might as well feel the ruin. We have nothing better to do. They had another path. They always have the paths ready for our snoops. Even though we have way more ways to tutor snoops than they have paths, but it is what it is. All right, pass the turn, and we still have plenty of stuff to do. And plenty of ways to find more snoops. We got an Oath Sworn Knight. That's the one that shrinks, right? If damage will be dealt to it while it has one counter on it, prevent the damage removal on one counter. Do you also prevent the damage that this deals? I don't think it does. That's a really good dude. Let's just chump. Make the things make the thing smaller. Move a counter from it. Kiki's cool. All right, let's go Goblin Ringleader. Go fetching for all the values. All right, I get Goblin Ringleader number two and a Skirk Prospector. Play um. Or let's just sack this guy to himself and play Chain Whirler because Chain Whirler will move and remove another counter from this guy. Or is it only combat damage? It damage in general. All right, cool. So make that guy smaller. Now we got a good blocker. Since they take the vial to four, I'm kind of hesitant to attack, so I'm not going to. Um, but I have a good blocker now. And then I can just Kiki, start copying Ringleader for days and get all the value. Bosri's lieutenant. Oh, we got a fear potential combos, but I can go and get a munitions expert probably with this other ringleader. Oh, last card's a vial. 
They could have just hid that to make me think they had something. It has to attack each turn of Fable. Oh, dang. It has to attack. All right, Auntie's Hovel revealing Kiki. Play Kiki. Uh, play Skirk Prospector and pass and leave up the threat of copying my Chain Whirler. But in reality, they're not going to swing and I'm just going to copy my Ringleader. And then we'll be good to go. Double Vials, sure. You don't have to use green either, but green isn't very common, I guess, so it works out. Yeah, you can use blue. It, green works out, blue works out. It doesn't matter. That's why there's, uh, that's why your typical green screen has blue on the back because you can either you can use either color, depending on what kind of clothes you're wearing. If you want to wear a green shirt one day, that's why you can flip it around and use the blue screen. But careful if you got blue eyes. All right, copy chain whirler. And completely destroy him. We're going to sweep their whole board here. Block there and double block there. And we are going to first strike you off, sir. We know you got no cards in hand. So that'll definitely do it. Right, nice. That thing sacks, but it's fine. One, two, three, four. Another ringleader. Go get a bunch of gobs. Bunch of gob stoppers. Get a snoop. There's the snoop we were looking for. Play the snoop. Ooh, Sling Gang Lieutenants. That seems pretty good. All right, copy Goblin Ringleader. Oh, they're just scooping it up. Yeah, too much value at this point. It's just over. Got value for days. Man, that was powerful. They kept disrupting our dang Snoop combo with their constant Path to Exiles, but we still could find it in the end because this deck has infinite, endless card advantage. Like, it's crazy. Is, this is one of those decks that looks weak on paper, but plays a lot better than it than you might think it does. It's insane like that. Got a game here against LFC, and we're going to be on the draw here. Going to keep this. Playing some Vile Goblins, and turn one, Aether Vile is always going to be keepable for me. All right, but they're going to Inquisition it, so suddenly this hand gets a lot worse. That's unfortunate. So that's, that uh, ups our chances of losing by about 75%. But um, we're still going to play on. Okay, more munitions experts. So if these can be useful, like if the opponent has like double bob here, then that would be the thing that helps us get back in this game because then we could actually use the munitions experts. So far, I'm guessing they're on the Skelemental deck. Hey, Chad, it's going pretty good. How about yourself? Getting food? Sweet. I want some food, too. It's Friday fat day for me. And Friday fat day means I eat all the fat food I want. Although I, I did my Friday fat day shopping yesterday because I was going to be busy recording today. So um, I brought, I bought some zebra cakes and I just ended up devouring them all yesterday. I didn't save them for Friday fat day. If there's zebra cakes in the house, I'm going at them. One to three at the moment. All 
right, I'll just kill Chandra here. I think that's a fine thing to do. Shoot Chandra for one. Tavern on Goblin. Play Munitions Expert. Shoot Chandra for two. Go to combat and kill Chandra. Ooh, what is that? Cakes. What the heck was that? I thought I saw a mosquito on me. It was either a piece of dust or like a some weird little hairy dust. Or as a mosquito, but yeah, I saw it on my hand right here. I, those things, whenever there's like a bug or something, I, I always just freak out and flail my arm rather than actually slap the thing. So I lose it and it's still here somewhere, whatever it is. All right, I can't afford to field a ruin and then chain whirler, so let's just chain whirler now. So the opponent's on Mardu Pyros, it looks like, because they collect a brutality ditching a collect or a lingering souls. What did they do to gain all that life? Did they collect a brutality to do all three modes? It looks like it. I could have saved the chain war for when they played the lingering souls, but it doesn't matter because I can Kiki and, and do that. And they saw my hand. They know that I'm just going to sling gang lieutenant and then kiki it. But no, I'm actually just going to kiki now. Because this is going to be nuts. If they don't have a bolt and I copy this chain whirler here, they are screwed. Super screwed. Did it work? Please don't bolt. Yes, you're a screwed opponent. You are screwed. Absolutely. When Chain Whirler gets value, it just feels too good. They could have pushed that at the start. Oh, no, they didn't because they didn't have Revolt. All right, well, that's fine. Next turn, I'm just going to go Sling Gang Lieutenant and clone it with Kiki. And this is going to be game over. Playing Blue White, testing New Teferi. Yeah, see, I want to build the New Teferi deck in, in Blue White with Oath of Teferi and uh, Discontinuality. Discontinuity, or whatever it's called. Well, the opponent just destroyed a lot of our value that we were about to get. Polygon's command is something that will definitely stop that, but we can still go sling gang, unless they thought sees us here, and they don't. Very cool. And they it looks like they ran out of value. And there is another key. Sweet. Um, I think let's just go sling gang here. It'll deal more damage than playing a key. Or not a sling gang, a siege gang. All right, Kiki. Dang, my ears just rang out of nowhere. That happens very randomly, where it's just like out of nowhere, your, your hearing just goes silent and then it just starts ringing. Weird. Got another Kiki and that'll do it. Just hard casting Kikis will do it. It's just a strong card in its own. Like as just a normal, regular mid-range card, not even used for combo, it's fine to just play Kiki and nobody does that. They're just like, they see this as a combo card only and they will never, um, you know, do a thing to, they'll never play it fairly. Like it's a fine, fair card. Very fine. I see a day ago, wait, hold on. Or what are we going to open again? Uh, Mardu Pyro. So against Mardu Pyro, I probably don't need so many munitions experts. Um, but what would I rather have? Blood Moon can kind of destroy them because it looked like they were not prepared for it. I could kind of hurt them with Blood Moon. Like I can stop them from casting their lingering souls and if they don't fetch a basic swamp they're only stuck on mono red um i could see it being decent i could see relic of progenitus being too i'm just gonna bring in one single relic screw it 
Just one relic. Uh, one munitions expert for a relic. I actually can't believe I won that game because my opening hand was so awkward. Hold on a second. My mouse died. There we go. I had to replace the battery. And I'm totally going to forget to cut that out of the YouTube video. Okay, this hand, I'm going to keep it and pray I don't get thoughts eased. I think that's my plan here. Um, so what do I not want? I probably don't want Relic. No, no, because that's my backup. If they take my Aether Vial, it's my backup. So I probably don't need Boggard Harbinger. Please don't thought seize me. Thank you. All right, get out Vile. Now, Vile is still very weak to potential K command, which is why against a deck like this, I forget, you you should probably side out K command. Or not K command, you should probably side out Vile because they can two for one you with the K commands. So I'll note that for next game once we get heavily destroyed by K command. At least that was fine. All right, let's play Skirk Prospector. So I'm still able to hold up um, Relic by sacking the Skirk Prospector if I desperately need to, like if they try to hack in Faith is Looting and then go for Gristlebrand, Gorios. You watched a guy play a few leagues with this deck earlier, seems fun. It is super fun. Like, I haven't had this fun with a, a deck in a while. Ooh. Now I can go Matron. And I can get the Snoop. Yes. Matron, get the Snoop, sack the Matron for mana, and crack the Relic to exile their Lingering Souls. Chandra Acolyte of Flame. They're going to start getting Elementals. All right, that's sweet. Um, so I think I want to... I could, like, be able to ruin their land and then just play Conspicuous Snoop or Conspicuous Snoop. Um, I think that's what I'll do. Mm, I could also go for Goblin Ringleader to try to find the thing I need, the whatever you call it, the um, Bogart Harbinger. Yeah, let's just do that. I found lots of value, and there's my Boggart Harbinger. Try to attack Chandra. All right, they're chum blocking with the spurt. I just need a land. So this, this uncommon right here was a 4-mana 2-2 two, two haste when it enters, draw 4 cards. Insane. Ransack the lab. So they are, uh, they are a Kroxadek. So it probably will be really helpful to uh, have Blood Moon. So I can screw up their Kroxa mana so they only are stuck on 1 black or 0 black. 
So I definitely want to side in uh, Blood Moon next game if we do lose this one. But now with Pasha League Mons plus Skirk Prospector going, it's going to be crazy. I'll take the two. Come on, please give me a land. That's a land. All right. Uh, let's reveal Pasha League Mons. I think I want to go Pasha League Mons plus mun Munitions Expert, Blast Chandra, and then sack a thing for mana, sack a thing for mana, shoot the spirit, shoot them, and then play Conspicuous Snoop. Yeah, let's go. Let's reveal pa Pasha League Mons, and let's play it. And then let's go for um, Munitions Expert. And hope they don't have a burn spell. Shoot Chandra for four. They're going to bolt something in response. They're going to bolt the Goblin Ringleader. All right, well, let's sack the Goblin Ringleader for mana and shoot Chandra. Bolts Pasha Leak Mons. Well, in response to that, let's sack Pasha Leak Mons for mana and shoot Chandra for one. And kill Chandra. And play Snoop. And next turn we win with Harbinger, so we are forcing them to deal with our Snoop again. And they just wasted two bolts. Count them, two. Alright, opponent, do you have removal spell number three? Or are you dead? Or do you have a Thoughtseize? That'll do it. Alright, so they successfully stopped the Snoop, but I still have another Snoop and a Kiki and all this good stuff. Cling to dust to exile the bloodstained mire. Playing red like blue. I know, right? The pie kit soon. Your thumbnail of your recent vid scares me. Was it? Oh, hey, Sir Red Ticks. I didn't know you watched my YouTube videos. Um, was it the uh, Boggles one? <laughs> All right. Um, let's. And he's Hovel on Snoop. Play Snoop. Go to combat. Swing. Sack the munitions expert. And go for Kiki. And pass the turn. Which I should have done that pre-combat, but okay. Is your last card an answer? Five mana, Ox. Hard cast Ox. They discard their hand and draw three cards. Three cards left. You have a Thoughtsies. That is the final question. Thoughtsies is what you need or a push. And they scoop it up. They know we have the bog art. I think uh, there was something we did earlier that revealed that we had the bog art. But yeah, they are done at that point. Oh, wow. This, they almost got us to run out of value there. They are a mono control deck, but even mono control can't stand up to the value that this deck generates. It is wild. Oh my goodness. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. 
as I always say, if you want to catch the full games, unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description, and you can check out the entire VOD there. Now, there is one match, that one round, that didn't make it into the video, and I'll let you know why. If you don't want spoilers, go check the link down below, but I'm going to spoil it in 3, 2, 1. So, it was a Mana Screw game, and I do not like to put Mana Screw games in videos, because I don't think they make for good content when you literally do nothing. Um, so, I cut that one out. Uh, so this first match we're going up against right here, uh, or we're speeding up the next two rounds today. This first one was the longest in the entire stream by a long shot. Um, because as you can see, we're going up against a four color, maybe five colored Niv, kind of like flicker, Neombi, snow deck. So you can imagine that it's going to be a grind. Like they have Siege Rhino and stuff, so they can stabilize and they have ways to flicker their guys. Like they didn't, they weren't a Soul Herder deck, which I was surprised that they weren't a Soul Herder deck because everything they had had ETP triggers. Siege Rhino, Ice Fang Codal, Coiling Oracle, Knight of Autumn, all this stuff that enters the battlefield and triggers, but yet they didn't have Soul Herder, or at least we didn't see it. And it looked like they were set up for a five color Niv. It looked like their deck had that build. But again, we didn't see it. We actually didn't even see red mana the entire time. We were able to do what we wanted to do that first game. I didn't get to commentate it quick enough, but uh, we did do the combo shenanigans or we did just like value out. I think what happened is we valued out because we had Kiki starting to copy Siege Gang Commander and that's just too much beef. Like this deck has been really, really, really impressive. You'll hear me talk about it more in the outro, but yeah, this deck is insane and I would totally consider playing it in paper. Uh, so... Game number two here, they're just ramping a bunch with Coiling Oracles, and whenever I try to kill their stuff, they just bounce it back with Niambi, and they just keep on uh, buying back uh, Ephemerate and Path and stuff with Eternal Witness and Ephemerating and getting back Ephemerate, but eventually what I'm able to do is play Goblin Chain Whirler and three for one them. Um, so I hit them in the face, and then I kill their Coiling Oracle, their Ice Fang Kotal, and their Eternal Witness. And then also I exile their grave or something with the relic or I forget. I did something to like stop what they were doing. Um, and then I just have way too much value. They're constantly detaining my creatures with the Lavinia that they courted for five for, which I thought they were going to court for Niv. Um, but as it turns out, it, it maybe they didn't even have Niv. But yeah, I had Kiki going and I had the conspicuous Snoop and I have the bog arts in hand. And so I'm just waiting for them to stop detaining me and then I can win. And they eventually run out of things to do, and I end up doing what I want to do, and we get there. So that is GG to, uh, oh, there's the Soul Herder. So it was a Soul Herder deck after all. Maybe I didn't realize that. But now we're going on to the last game in the video, and this is how it all comes to an end. Um, because we're going up against Twiddle Storm, and there's literally nothing we do here. Like, they literally just, like, turn three, turn three, and I can't interact. Like, the deck is too quick, and... I really didn't prepare this deck sideboard too well for combo because the ultimate card to stop total storm is uh damping sphere which shuts down lotus uh field itself and also stops storm shenanigans so it just like double stops total storm i wasn't really preparing for total storm i haven't ran into this deck in a long time and so i wasn't really you know nobody's really preparing for it but yeah and the opponent, this opponent was also in our chat. So they knew our sideboard. They knew our entire 75 and knew what we were sideboarding in. So they had the knowledge advantage on top of that. So uh, they ended up getting there. Couldn't really interact with them. So GG and let's go on to the wrap up. Hope you enjoyed. So we ended up with three total wins and I haven't had this much fun with a new deck in a long time. I've never played the Vile Goblins deck before and this was just an absolute blast to play. And I thought it was gonna be difficult to play but it actually played very similarly to the green white, just like mid range Vile decks that I've played in the past. It plays kind of exactly the same, you know, cause you're like, I played with Militia Bugler a lot and Goblin Ringleader is basically Militia Bugler. And then, yeah, this it basically feels like a green white deck. And I'm saying the word basically a lot. And uh, I really, really wish that I got to use Krenko Mob Boss, but I just never threw it. I think, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it in my hand at all. The whole entire stream. But this deck feels so powerful and so good. I like it. It very, very much impressed me. Very, very much. And I think that... You know, if I obviously had money, I would actually play this in paper. I feel like this is definitely a deck. Like, it, it takes a lot for me to say that I would actually play a deck in paper. But this feels like something I would definitely play in paper. It's got that serious potential. 
and I had so much fun playing with it. I feel like this is a deck that I can play for like a whole year and not get bored of it, just like I did with Bant Spirits. Um, there, there's just so much tech and so much little tr like tricks you can do and so much lines of play. It is a difficult deck to pilot. Um, you gotta know your way around a creature mid-range vile deck. Um, but there was like some little tricky things I could do with like Skirk Prospector sacking for mana and going to get like Pasha League Mons in combination with Sling Gang and just get the reach you need. Like you can just like, there's like some positions where you can actually get lethal when you don't realize you can. And I feel like there's got to be at least a couple times I missed that during the stream. And I'm sure that there's one guy in my comment section on YouTube who I know is going to point that out um, because he always critiques my gameplay. Um, <laughs> um, I really have no problems with the list, except I did end up changing it up midway through. And I, I will put a message on screen during the intro and deck tech of the video that I was not supposed to have Mog War Marshal because I realized at a certain point during the stream that... Sling Gang Lieutenant already does what you need to do with Mog War Marshal. So Mog War Marshal is redundant. So we took it out and put another Skirk Prospector and put in another Sling Gang. Because Sling Gang is a powerful just mid-range grind piece on its own. Copy that up with Kiki and you're basically winning. And there's there, there I go saying basically again. Um, but I was actually, like, I saw Skirk Prospector as a four of in a list. And, like, I saw it as a one of in another list, a two of in another list. Like, the numbers all are all over the place with Skirk Prospector. But after playing with it, I was thinking that it was literally going to do nothing and I would just take it out. But it did way more than I thought it would. Uh, so much to the point where I think I would go up to a fourth copy. Uh, Goblin Crater Maker, I never really found a use for it in the main deck. Um, I would definitely put that in the sideboard, but the sideboard's pretty tight, so I don't know about that. The munitions expert situation felt fine. All the rest of it felt pretty, pretty um, fine. Although I didn't really ever use Franco, so that, you know, by default, since I never got to try it, I can say it's cuttable. Um, but other than that, the deck seems pretty fine how it is and i would definitely recommend picking it up if you're into this kind of deck or if you're, if you're into creature decks in general i highly recommend trying it out it's a whole lot of fun um and you can definitely i mean if you already own a set of of aether vials and you don't want to buy like blood stained myers cavern of souls blood crypts you don't have to like you can definitely budgetize the mana base and the deck can still function that's the cool thing about it. All you really need is is the the creature, the main deck, the or whatever, the lands. You don't really need them too badly. Like the cavernous souls, you can do without them. You can do without fetches. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Let me know what deck you want to see in the comments down below with brand new course at 2021 cards. Go we'll check out the social media links down below as well as the link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream our Magic the Gathering gameplay every Monday, all day long, and variety on the rest of the week. If you want to see me play some other games and stuff like that. If you'd like to try today's deck out, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck on Magic Online and try it out for yourself. And if you'd like to pick up this deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link. And anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. Special thanks to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. Especially the patrons. This channel is possible because of you guys. Thank you for all your support. If you'd like to support on Patreon as well, the link is down below. You can gain access to exclusive rewards. And there's even a tier on there where you can get me to play your deck on the channel. And uh, with that, I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.